So welcome back to some more Skyward Sword. Last time, we explored around the Farron Woods, got acquainted with some Kikwis that I really want as plushies in real life. Um, met with the Kikwi Elder, he told us where Zelda was going, and now we're presumably where Zelda is. So, I think this time, well, I think, this time we are going to go in there and go and try to save Zelda. There's a grasshopper. Uh, get into bug net. You got a fair and grasshopper. Just trying to show every bug I can. Uh, there was another one back here, actually. Yeah, get in my net. So this time, let's go. Let's actually go and take care of the temple. Door shield. Right, I'm stupid. Like that gravestone was telling us, shoot the pink. Or red. I don't know what color. I'm thinking it's pink. I'm colorblind. I'm sorry. Can we open the doors? Adventure into the darkness. So I did not do anything off screen. I probably should have. I probably should have reloaded my um, seed pellet thing. Welcome to Skyview Temple. Or the Forest Temple, if you so wish to call it that. Master, I have bad news. The auras of many creatures reverberate throughout this temple. As a result, I can't isolate Zelda's aura. You will not be able to track her here. Given this situation, I suggest you look around to see where we should move next. As per usual in Zelda dungeons, we have to make our way through. Now these are questionable bird statues. You can't fly in there. Or you can't fly there. You can't fly from the sky and jump down here. Is what I'm trying to say. Also, you got some cobwebs. Uh, man, my eye is itchy. Ah, jeez. I would normally cut that out, but be realistic. I'm too lazy to do that. <laughs> Got some normal keys. We already met these guys back at the cave, back on Skyloft. And we can see that the sword's already better than what we had before, because it's one-shotting them. Also, a speedrunning trick with these cobwebs. Just roll through them. <laughs> you don't have to swipe at every single little line, so don't worry about that. And you have a very jerkishly placed Deku Baba here, which is no problem because we have a slingshot. So let's head up here. There we go. Now you could theoretically just shoot the crystal with the slingshot behind the Deku Baba, but might as well show the intended way, right? Anyway, nothing left for us in this little hallway. Let's keep moving. So yeah, this is the first Zelda dungeon in this game, so that is a very jerkishly placed amber relic. Wow. Also, you got this eyeball, which we have to screw with. Yeah, super easy without motion controls. You literally just go in a circle. <laughs> I know I keep harping on the controls, and I'm sorry for that, but some people have, um, including me, will see someone do something and then wonder how the hell they did it, and then have to look all around for the controls. And yeah, I just I want to be helpful, all right. And we've got a green bacoblin over here who is stronger-ish than the other bacoblins. He's just more tanky. That's all. This room can be very confusing, and I'm gonna do everything I can to make this simple. First of all, you want to jump down here, and you got some rupees down here. There is a crystal. Don't shoot that crystal unless if you don't want any of the rupees down here. Actually, I think that's the only rupees that are down here. Uh, okay. Because when you shoot this... For some reason, that's connected to that door. Oh, I was thinking of the other thing. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, so the whole mechanic here is shooting things with ranged weapons. That's all this is. Might as well just unlock both of the doors right off the bat. And we want to head through this door first. 
This is not a very big temple, but it, it can be confusing if you don't know what you're doing. Anyway, we got some... That is not... I was trying to do that, Fi. Got some Skulltulas. And if you smack them, they'll flip around and you can go and uh, thrust and kill them. So there you go. And you got some little wall skulltulas. They actually cannot hurt you. They just suck your stamina and make you fall. That's all they do. They don't even damage you, so don't worry about them. You want to jump down here, and there is a secret hole with another crystal. This is the one I was thinking of. Um, for some reason, it's connected to the waterways, and it just starts flooding the area a little bit, including this one. So there you go. And you may want to keep in mind of this little X spot for later. But for now, it's completely pointless to us. And we have no ways of getting over there from this room right now. So let's head to the other side. Once back to the middle room, you can see it's changed a little bit. You got some water in here. But now we want to go to the room directly across from us. Where we get meet and uh, where we get greeted to another green macabre. There we go. And you got some more wall sculptures, or sculptures in general. But you want to shoot these vines down. And just jump across. And we got a Quadro Baba. Yeah, they take three hits to fully kill, so parrying them is just easier. Now, if you want to, you can just go and kill these if you want to make it easier. These guys don't respawn, I don't think, so. Might as well just take care of them. These guys can be very annoying. Oh, oh okay. Nice. As I say, with annoying. We don't need to talk to that. Graves. Actually, there's something I missed. Uh, my bad, I just remembered. In this little corridor, that is very well hidden. Make sure you get that, because that further raises the water level. And you'll see what that does in a minute. Very jerkishly placed crystal. Because my first time playing this game, I got stuck here for about an hour trying to figure out what to do. And then I figured out that that was there the entire time. Anyway, we get this chest. And we got the dungeon map. Now, you might be saying this is useless. This does nothing in every Zelda game. It's completely pointless. No. It also reveals the locations of treasure chests. They combined the compass to the dungeon map in this game. Now, unfortunately, they did not do this in later games, but in this game... It's just the dungeon map, no more compass, which the compass is completely useless if you know where everything is. So you see we have a chest over there, and you're wondering how we get there. Well, now that we have the water level raised, we can actually maneuver and get to these vines. That's why I was saying you want to raise the water level. So anyway, we'll head up here. Also, I believe up there is a uh, shortcut for later by kind of... It's kind of pointless, and I want to save my Deku uh, seeds right now, so. Anyway, got an actual fight with a Skulltula. And boink. And yeah, if that thing knocks into you, it will damage you, so be wary of that. And we got two of these eyes that we'll just screw with. Which opens up another treasure chest. And we get another doo -doo 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 -doo. the classic. You got a small key. And as everyone knows, small keys leads, uh, leads to locked doors. So let's go and uh, open some doors now, shall we? Also, yes, you can swim. I probably should mention that. There's not a whole lot of things you can do with swimming right now, so don't worry about it. I'll head over to this locked door. Okay. 
I love the locked door designs in this game. It's actually really cool. Now this is pretty much your hub room, kinda. We're pretty much more than halfway done with this place already. Um, but right now, let's get this piece out of the way. We want to open up this door. After that, we'll just ignore everything and go through the door. Uh, I probably should have mentioned, you probably want to be prepared for this fight, because this one can be hard. We have... A Stalfos. This thing will block, and you have to swing at the right place. Kind of like the Pacabons, except these will counterattack if you do not hit them right. And they will constantly move their stuff around. And you can parry them, just like that. Now, this guy is mean. He can damage you really badly. I, should, I probably made that look super easy, but, um... Yeah, that dude, I think he takes out, like, a, a whole heart or two. In hero mode, he takes, like, two or three. Like, he is a dangerous foe. But now we have the beetle, which is a super cool item. You have acquired the new item. Analysis of this object's insect-like profile and wings indicates that it can fly. After launching, you can remotely pilot the device. The sharp structure on the front of the device can sever threads and deliver a blow to smaller objects. Yeah, so we're trapped in here right now, but... The coolest item. I love the beetle. The beetle is such a cool little gadget. Um, the little backstory on this item is that it was originally going to be the boomerang. And they were trying to incorporate motion controls, kind of turn it into like the Gale Boomerang from Twilight Princess, but they turned it into the Beetle. And I think all for the better, because the Beetle is a lot more interesting. And this is the only iteration of the Beetle in Zelda, I believe. Oh, he just crawled back up. I wanted to show something. So you can knock down walls, or yeah, I keep calling these wall sculptures. You can knock these sculptures down and actually have a 1v1 fight with them. And you can just go and finish them. So there you go. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time clearing out this main hub room, or get blocked by a great goblin. Yeah, so the special thing with the um, beetle is that it's basically a uh, remote control projectile. You can make it go different places, it's used really well for utility, wow, that's a useless fairy, because I still have the one back from um, the uh, um, Sealed Temple. But yeah, you can take the beetle and pretty much go wherever you want. It will grab rupees, it will grab items, it will grab um, pretty much anything on the floor. Um, it will also kill enemies sometimes if they're really low or break certain items, or make certain things fall, you name it, and the beetle can do it. And yeah, the beetle can also activate beetle's air shop if you are wanting to save on ammo. Now I will warn, this is not a replacement to the slingshot, because as you can tell, it has a lot less projectile speed than slingshots. It also does not have the power to stun, so be weary of that. Uh, the beetle is strictly utility based, so. Nonetheless, a very cool item. Also, I believe this thing can also kill Deku Bapas because um, it can hit the vine, so. It can kill a couple of things. Got an amber relic. Anything else in here? It is very worth your time to go through these little corridors, just to make sure. I uh, got another box here. These boxes are actually super useful, so... See, got a red rupee. Take the beetle on through here. And you see why I bought more wallet upgrades? We already have the original 151 on our belt. Which is nuts, because we came in with like 30. <laughs> so that unlocks that door, which is kind of pointless to us right now. Let's go knock down this Skulltula. And yeah, I'm... Okay, that was dumb. And I know I may be pronouncing these things wrong, but I've always pronounced them Skulltulas. I've never called them Skulltula, even though there's no, like, ch sound in their name, but... 
you know. I've always thought it was supposed to sound like tarantula, and that's got the ch sound in it, so. Whatever. I call it how I want it, damn it. <laughs> Unless if I'm extremely wrong, which some people may feel very strongly about. So anyway. Uh, I check up there. And we're back to the beginning. Okay. Before you leave the room. Now, I will... That fairy is still there. I will say... Oh, there's another box. Before you leave the room, if you want to grab this right now, you can... Um, I'm going to simply because I'm overly confident. Also, wow, there's a lot of rupees. Holy crap. That's 5, 25, 45, 65, 70 rupees. Yeah. So you see, we have a heart piece in there. And how do we get said heart piece? Well, gotta fly high. Now, what my suggestion is, especially if you're playing the hero mode, is that I would take care of the other areas before grabbing this, because heart pieces instantly give you a full heal. So, take that as you will. I'm going to grab it now because I'm overly, conf overly confident in my abilities. Just one more. And the only way we can go is to the left of the area, so let's go on over there. I'm sorry if I'm going quick, there's just not a lot to talk about with this temple. Uh, there is a cool little mod, though, that you can get for uh, Breath of the Wild, which will uh, inject the Skyview Temple into your game. Which is kind of cool. Uh, it's a really neat idea. Uh, yeah, we don't want to do that yet. And that's if you do modding stuff, if you so wished. Anyway, we have a fight with a Skulltula, which I am going to completely cheese. <laughs> and, uh, just fly the beetle over here. And as you can tell, yes, it does have a limit of how long it can fly. Don't do that like There we go. It has a limit of how long you can fly for, so... Be careful with that. I think it's also dependent on distance more than anything. A bunch of hearts. I guess that's if he had trouble with the... Jesus, three hearts? I mean, I guess Skulltulas can be very annoying, but still, it's not that bad of an enemy, once you know what you're doing. Then again, you can say that for anything. Push this block on over. And we need to line this block up with the uh, third eye. Because everyone knows that you have a, a hidden third eye in the middle of your forehead. Uh, let's push this up by one, and then that should be good, right? Yep. I don't mean to make fun of that uh, belief, I'm just making a joke. Anyway. We got another small key! So what was the point of coming all the way out here? Nothing. Just for time. <laughs> One thing you will want to do, though. You don't have to fight any of the enemies over here, I don't think. Actually, yeah, you do. Never mind. Yeah, take the beetle. And piss off the sculpture a little bit. And hit this crystal. That will raise the water levels in here to where we can finally go up those steps. So there you go. And how is this temple not completely flooded? I don't know. Oh, that is not what I wanted to do. I'm trying to, come on, there we go. You wanna flick upward on these sculptures when they're on the ground and then finish them. So, the more you know. Cut this down, roll through. There we go. Now to the other half. Yeah, this dungeon's not too bad, to be honest. It's just time consuming, I think. There's, they make you run around a lot, and yeah, it's not the. It's not my favorite dungeon, but it's not a bad one. You get a beetle. Did you drop an item? 
Oh, right. Deku Babos can drop uh, Deku Seeds. Also down there is a Quadro Baba, so be careful about that. Yeah, be careful about that. You fall down. And just demonstrating how powerful the Beetle actually is. Like, wow, that is strong. So that's shimmy on over here. More tight ropes. And head on door number two. If I remember right, yes. Uh, what? Right. You have this enemy. Stalja. Uh, you have to kill all the heads at the same time. Also, his eyes are red, which means he's about to attack. Yep. I mistimed that. There we go. These guys can be very annoying, so... If you're good at parrying them, just parry them. If you're not, then just wait until they, uh... Until they line up. And I probably should have mentioned this, too. You can actually go back and grab that, um... Amber Relic that was back um, when I was saying that was a jerkish spot for it. You can use the Beetle for that, but I don't think that's all necessary because, seriously, I'm not going all the way back there for an Amber Relic that just spawns on the overworld, just saying. Knock down that Skulltula. And sprint on over here. And we can now allow ourselves to get a shortcut. So now we can go back to the hub room anytime we want. And we can see in there we have a big boy chest that we desperately want. And you have a green bacoblin, who I am going to give the same treatment to to the other bacoblin earlier. It's just- oh! I forgot about you. Well, you go into the cliff. There you go. He just exploded. Okay. Keep on moseying on over here. Come on, Link. There we go. Now, if you're wondering, this is like the very last part. So, don't worry. There's not much left to do, yeah, to do here. Uh, Link. There, no, Link. <laughs> Why, buddy? Why you gotta be weird? Just thinking about cheese too much. So, knock this rope down. And although this looks sketchy as hell, uh, we are going to go for it. Turn ourselves over to this tree branch, if I can do that. Come on, Mike. There we go. No, go down. And swing ourselves over here. Yeah, this dungeon's not that bad. It's just... I mean, it is the tutorial dungeon, so... I can kind of guess why it would take a little bit. There we go. Uh, this is a... Again, super sketchy. Uh. And if I remember right, you want to go down a little bit. Like this. There we go. And I'm just saying, no one in their right mind would actually do this in real life. I'm just saying. Video game logic is, well, video game logic. Hop on over here, and get a really pretty looking chest. Like, holy crap, that looks pretty. You got a golden carving. So instead of boss keys, or uh, big keys, and you never know which one they're gonna call them, we have carvings. And, looks like we're gonna have a fun little mini game here soon. Let's go on over here. And there is a little chest off in the corner. I believe this is just, like, yeah, 20 rupees. And see, we're already back at 267. <laughs> Ugh. Now, I will warn you. If you go through this door, you're going into a fight. If you do not have a fairy or a potion that you want or any of the sorts, do not go further beyond this door. You can take this bird statue and leave the dungeon if you so wish. Keep in mind, you will have to traverse through the entire dungeon again if you do that. That is why I grabbed all the shortcuts. 
Most of them, at least. But now I'm an idiot, so I'm gonna keep going. Now, this is a really cool puzzle. You have to maneuver this around. And if I'm not dumb, uh, I always forget which way. Okay, we gotta re rotate this, right? You can kind of just fumble around until you get it. Here we go. Uh, there we go. And insert. Really cool puzzle. Makes it where uh, it's actually engaging. Booyah. When the words of Dante, jackpot. And yeah, you have no choice. You open that door, you're going in. So. Look who it is. I thought that tornado I stirred up would have caught would have tossed and torn you apart, yet here you are, not in pieces. Not that your life or death has any consequence. It's just the girl that matters now, and I can sense her here, just beyond this door. Yes, we plucked her majesty from the perk in the clouds, and now she's ours. Oh, but listen to me, I'm being positively uncivil. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the demon lord who presides over this land you look down upon. The world you call the surface, you may call me Kirihim. In truth, I very much prefer to be indulged with my full title Lord Kirihim, but I'm not fussy. <laughs> Did you really just draw your sword, foolish boy? By all rights, the girl should have fallen into our hands already. She was nearly ours when that loathsome servant of the goddess snatched her away. Do you have any idea how that made me feel inside? Furious! Outraged! Sick with anger! This turn of events have left me with a strong appetite for bloodshed. Still, it hardly seems fair, being, being of my position, to take all my anger out on you. Which is why I promise up front to not murder you. No, I'll just beat you with an inch of your life. Here's our first boss fight, Kira him. Demon Ward. He's gonna point his... Okay, that is not what I wanted to do. He's gonna point his hand in a specific direction, and you gotta go to the opposite direction. If he's pointing in the middle, then just hit wherever you want. Just don't da uh, jab. He is influenced by which way you are facing the source, so just keep holding up and then swipe upwards if you want an easy way out. There we go. He's gonna lick his lips, because he really needs chapstick. And he pulls out his own sword. This is where it gets super dangerous. He's gonna start doing his own things. When he pulls that out, swipe in the direction that's going. There we go. He's gonna block in a certain direction, like most other enemies. And you just have to swipe the opposite way. Alright. Reflect some of those. Let's see if he does this move. Here we go. And parry. He's gonna dash at you with the sword in hand like a Naruto watcher. I didn't know how to say that any easier. <laughs> and uh, when he does that, just wait for the right timing and then parry him. Like this. There we go. And no Skyward Strikes don't really work on him. You can throw it at him, but it's not gonna do anything to him. So... But it is useful for this. Oh, that looked sick. 
Oh, okay. Never mind. Skyward Strike is cool. Well, you put up more of the fight than I would have thought possible out of such a soft boy. But don't clap yourself quite yet. Or don't clap for yourself quite yet. That sword of yours is the only reason you still live. I fear I spent far too long teasing and toying with you. The girl's presence has all but faded from this place, which means there's no reason to linger here. Goodbye, Sky Child. Run and play in this time. Get in my way again, though, and you're dead. <laughs> yeah, this game, this game is kind of dark. It talks a lot about death and bloodshed and blood in general. It's odd. But, we have a new type of heart we haven't seen just yet. And don't worry if you're having trouble on Girahim, he is notoriously hard. He is a very tough first fight. I find him tougher than most of the bosses in this game, so. Anyway. You got a heart container. This is what these uh, pieces of heart will eventually turn into. So now we have seven hearts, and if you're having trouble with gear him, these pods will always have hearts in them. So, be wary of that if you're playing on normal. Anyway, through the golden light of the door. And I'm sorry if my voice acting is terrible. I do not voice act at all, so if I did, if I did all right, uh, thank you, because that is very flattering. Before we do anything here, grab your beetle, fly this up. This is kind of like a little private oasis, and uh, this place is actually in Breath of the Wild. It's one of the, I believe it's the uh, Fountain of Wisdom or something like that in Breath of the Wild. Also, you got a really rare collectible. Oh no, piss, Link, why? <laughs> oh god, now he's doing the cutscene with the stupid net. Oh god. That's one way to ruin it. <laughs> and he ruined the collectibles. Damn you, Link. Right, let's see if we can back off. We can make these guys respawn. There will always be like one or two uh, bluebirds here. So I highly recommend trying to get at least one of them if you can. Uh, are they going to... Maybe they don't come back. Oh, they're just not gonna fly in. Right, come on, Bluebird. Come on, Bluebird. I desperately need you for my collection. Get in the net! There we go. Also, you can capture these butterflies. Oh, or, or not. There we go. Blessed Butterfly. They have more uses in the future. Also, we have 60 hornets. Um, they have more uses in the future, but for right now... Um, I'll just grab them if you see them. And we're not going up there quite yet because there's a little fairy fountain if you need fairies. Useful after the fight with Girahim. There is a hidden goddess statue here. Very jerkish placement and you will see why I say grab this now instead of later. So, anyway, let's hop up on here. There's no more bluebirds for us to grab. So, let's give it a jab. Master, I have a message written in the language of the gods of old. Let me, er, allow me to translate for you. From the edge of time I guide you, the one chosen to carry out the goddess's mission. The spirit maiden who descended from the clouds must travel to two sacred places to purify her body. You stand in one of these places, Skyview Spring. The other is known as Earth, as the Earth Spring. The second spring is hidden away deep within the scorched earth of Elden. The spirit maiden, ever mindful of the heavy task entrusted to her, has set out for the second sacred place. Oh. 
You got the ruby tablet. The weathered surface of this heavy stone tablet feels very old. Master, as I just translated, it would appear that Zelda purified herself in the waters of the spring. I don't want to know what that means. I calculate a 97% chance that she was already out, or she has already set out for Elden, where another great spring exists. However, it is not clear what method of yeah, what method of travel Zelda used to move from here to her next yeah, next destination. I cannot speak. It's been a long day. My analysis suggests that you should take the tablet to the altar in Skyloft. Doing so will likely open a new column of light on the surface, allowing you to descend to another area and continue your search for Zelda. Let's return to the sky once more before continuing our search. The bird statue outside can take us back up. And yeah, they kick you out of the spring and put you back in front of the temple. That is why you want to grab those 20 rupees and the goddess statue that is sitting there. Hey, it's me, Kui. Did you find the girl? Who are you? You mean, who am I? Don't tell me you forgot your old buddy Maki. Now I'm sad, Kukui. I hate myself for choosing that option now. I am sorry. I'm so glad I've finally been reunited with all my Kikui friends. It's all thanks to you, Kuweep. With any luck, hopefully you'll find that girl you've been searching for real soon, Koroku. Take care, okay? Thank you, Maki. I'm sorry. Also, where did he... Damn, he disappeared pretty quick. Well, now we know our next objective. We gotta head back to Skyloft and put in the ruby tablet. But for now, let's end things off. So, next time on Skyward Sword, we're gonna continue our objective and keep looking for Zelda. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.